Coming up, more drivers and teams are getting on the digital media bandwagon. The Short Track Super Series is in action tonight, and I've got some numbers for you from Justin Grant, PPM, Max Blair, and Carson Macedo. Let's roll. Today is Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. It seems as though we're starting to get more and more drivers and teams finally embracing digital media, and I have a few things I wanted to point out to you today. The first is Thomas Miserall's YouTube channel. You can find it by searching for Timez TV. He seems to have gotten pretty serious about it in the last month and has posted 13 vlog style videos. He's got everything from shop content to RC cars, drifting, and plenty of track days in there between these sprint cars and midgets. Love him or hate him, Timez is rarely not entertaining and he's done a nice job with these videos. I'll get his channel added to the Dirt Tracker YouTube account uh, in the videos section of dirttracker.com soon. Certainly check him out if you want some more content. Uh, definitely some good stuff there from Timez. Also, Logan Shuhart and Shark Racing have partnered with Ascent Media and the Buckaloos. They do a lot around Knoxville. They're going to document some of the shark racing races this season. The first episode is premiering tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern. And the trailer looks really great. It's a similar feel, I think, to kind of what we saw a few weeks ago from the Sheldon Hoddenshield video. And we should be getting more of those uh, this season as well. should be able to find that shark racing video tonight on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Make sure you keep an eye on the shark racing and Logan Shuhart accounts for links to those. I've been talking about this for a few years at this point, but there's a huge opportunity for competitors around dirt racing to own their own channels like this. You've seen Hunt the Front do it to absolutely massive, uh, massive success, and now others are finally jumping on. I think it's important to keep in mind here that this isn't just about exposure for your team. Yes, that's great. More eyeballs for your sponsors and such. But what's more about here is the money that can be generated through these various methods. Obviously, racing is really expensive. And if you get across 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, for example, on YouTube, you can get a cut of the AdSense revenue generated by your videos. For the Dirt Tracker channel, I've averaged between $5 and $6 per 1,000 views over the last year. If you apply those same, we call those CPM numbers, if you apply those same CPM numbers to the Hunt the Front channel, they've got something like 36 million views at this point, and they've probably generated like $200,000 just in AdSense money over the past few years, and that's kind of on the low end of an estimate. They've used that audience to also generate revenue through merchandise and their Patreon. And if you look at their Patreon at the lowest end of an estimation with their current number of 1,524 patrons, they're probably making an additional $7,000 a month at least. And again, these numbers are low end guesses that don't include things like merch sales or additional brand deals and sponsorships they've gotten through their channels. Those are not insignificant amounts of money. Obviously, dirt lay model racing at the highest levels is incredibly expensive, and that revenue has really helped their team get better cars and engines. They're able to travel more often. They've upgraded their trailer and their trucks. Uh, so th that money has really helped that team grow into kind of what was just a regional team around Florida to now they're out traveling more often. They're running Lucas shows, they're running Outlaw shows, they're going to Bristol. Uh, and that money that has really helped them, and the fans have really helped kind of pump that program up. Around motorsports, it's worked out really well for others like uh, if you look at Haley Deegan, she now has nearly half a million subscribers on YouTube. And just 12 videos over the last few months from Kyle Larson have earned him almost 20,000 YouTube subscribers. There's a serious audience for this type of behind the scenes content. And you can do it on YouTube, you can do it on Instagram, you can do it on TikTok. There's plenty of places you can do it. I'm just using the YouTube stuff here as an example. If you're a dirt racer that wants to get started, it doesn't even take much knowledge or equipment. You can do quite a bit of this stuff with just your phone and a few YouTube tutorial videos. And if you look at Timez, he's using a couple of GoPros. And I'm going to keep spotlighting these channels and videos as they pop up. Definitely good to see more kind of recognizing the potential value here. And for us as race fans, it gives us this opportunity to kind of see in behind the scenes of these race teams. And it's really fun for us. I think that's really cool. Uh, if you want some dirt racing in your life today, we've got another round of midweek modified action with the Short Track Super Series at Accord Speedway in New York tonight. This is round two of the North Region for 2022. Matt Shepard is the current North, uh, North Region points leader after he won the opener at Orange County Fair back on April 2nd. Tonight's race is 50 laps and $6,000 to win, and we should uh, see other names like Anthony Perego, Danny Creeden, Jeff Strunk, and plenty of others. Accord is a quarter mile track located about 100 miles north of New York City up Interstate 87. 
This will be the eighth appearance by the Short Track Super Series at the track. Also on the card tonight are Crate 602 Sportsman. Hot laps are scheduled for 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you cannot be there, the race will be streamed live on Flow Racing, as are all of the Short Track Super Series events in 2022. I think as a whole, these midweek modified shows are kind of a brilliant move from these series. As long as you can still draw the crowds to the gates, getting away from those crowded weekends is a solid opportunity to get your racing front and center on some of these days where there's a lot less going on, and especially on the streaming services. There's certainly plenty of stick and ball sports that happen during the week, so there's no reason why dirt racing can't do the same. I think the biggest issue is just making sure you get people out of the track at a reasonable time so folks can get to work the next day and kids can get to school. And obviously that means running an efficient program that doesn't have six or eight divisions competing. Run two divisions, keep the program rolling along all night, and get folks out by 9 or 9.30. I think you'd be surprised at how well those types of programs would go. Before we close out today, let's dive into the analytics section a little bit today uh, at DirtTracker.com, give you a few numbers to ponder. First, with Brad Sweet's top 10 streak busted back at Bristol, the current longest active streak right now in the country is owned by Justin Grant with the USAC National Sprint Car Series. He's gone 10 straight finishes inside the top 10. Right behind him are Buddy Kofoid with the USAC Midges. He's got nine straight top 10s. And Parker Price Miller also nine straight top 10s with the All-Stars. We talked about PPM yesterday, and there are a lot of numbers in his favor right now with the series. He's leading the All-Stars in average finish over the last five races and has nine top 10s in nine appearances in 2022. I feel like that first win of the year with the All-Stars is close. With the World of Outlaws lay models, Max Blair has dropped nearly 100 points behind Dennis Arb Jr., and that has happened because he's finished 15th or worse in four of the last five races. A team needs to find ways to time trial and heat race better early in the night as they're way down the order in both of those categories. They are starting features more than two positions worse than Herb, and then they're not passing as many cars as he is once green. Definitely some work to do when the series returns to action next week. And when the Word of Outlaw Sprint Cars hit Lincoln Speedway and Williams Grove this week, keep an eye on Carson Macedo. He's only 20 points back of Brad Sweet for the championship lead, and Central PA is a good place for him. He has finishes of 5th and 6th in his previous two trips to Lincoln, and he's won twice in the past six trips the Outlaws have taken to Williams Grove. With Brad Sweet's kind of known issues in the past racing in Pennsylvania, this could be a great chance for Macedo to take the lead. 20 points is 10 positions or less if you figure that uh, the difference between first and second is actually four points. And if you spread that out over three nights, that's only a bit more than three spots per race. We'll talk more about the Outlaws and Lincoln uh, on tomorrow's show. The streaming schedule, again, has two shows on it for today. Flow Racing has the Short Track Super Series from Accord Speedway, like I said, and there is Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Uh, if you would like to support what I'm doing, uh, you can grab a Dirt Tracker decal right now over at dirttracker.com slash decal. $3 uh, shipped right to you. Uh, I still have a nice little stack of them available, so uh, if you order, as soon as I see your order, I will get it in the mail to you. So if you order today, I'll have it in the mail for you today. Uh, that's it for the show today. Have a good Tuesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.